Jordan Peterson spends two and a half hours interviewing RFK, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., and this is the most viral, clipped out part of the interview. It's his perspectives on faith. And so we're going to be going over this and getting our reaction from this. If you like this type of content, my name is Aaron. I do Christian commentary on culture. Thanks for coming back to the channel. Hit subscribe, like, comment, share, all that kind of stuff. And let's get right into this. Like you could really see RFK call Christianity hateful and divisive and dangerous. And you know, I think Jordan Peterson is a little put off and he crosses his arms. But let's get right into the video and it's going to be a good one. How do you <laughs> construe the relationship between this spiritual orientation that you developed, um, more classic religious beliefs, let's say, um, your family is famously Catholic. I presume that that also applies to you, at, at least by lineage, and also your political aspirations and career. Uh, so, is have you have you stepped outside of the twelve step ethos into a more classic domain of spirituality? Well, I, I and, can't... and how do you relate that to the political? Yeah, I mean, I came from you know a really firm uh, sort of you know. A base of, of, you know, Catholic schools, Catholic piety. I mean, my family went to church twice a day during the summertime, uh, every day. We went, we said the rosary every night on our knees, you know, we said prayers at every, um, at, so, so at every meal before and after. So there was a consciousness of, uh, you know, of a, of a kind of present and intervening God in our, throughout our lives, my life. So I, I had, kind of a basis in that kind of uh, orthodoxy um, when I went, when I, you know, but, but when you're, when you're, when you're an addict, you're living against conscience. And when you do that, you're, you're pushing God out of your life. So, you know, God became a really a distant concept to me during the years that I was, uh, um, that I was a, an addict and I, an active addict. And I, if you had asked me, I guess at that time, do I believe in God? I'd say, yeah, but I, it, I had no sense of any kind of spiritual experience or authentic religious experience happening in my life. If you ask me where I am on, you know, kind of organized religion today, I'm, uh, you know, what I do, I'm like a sponge. I take whatever I can out of, out of any, you know, I'm, I, I read a lot. I read about, um, you know, uh, other religions and I, I'm like a sponge. I take the wisdom out of each, you know, thing, that I, out, of, out of each source and try to integrate the things that, um, that I find useful into my own cosmology. But, you know, I'm the least doctrinaire person, and I think orthodoxies are dangerous wherever they are. I think, you know, whether they're religious or secular, orthodoxies um, are, you know, are often hateful and, you know, sometimes lethal. And that, uh, and being doctrinaire is kind of the enemy of, of civility and community, ultimately. Um. Wow. So look at, I mean, look at Jordan Peterson and look at his body language. He is not liking that answer. <laughs> so, I mean, he is not liking that at all. I think this is totally surprising. And I actually hate, I hate this about it because it's totally misinformed. But I, I want to ask a question like, what does RFK mean by orthodoxy? Because he said orthodoxy is dangerous and deadly and lethal and hateful and the enemy of civility. So I'm like, I'm on this. Like, whoa, whoa, what do you mean by orthodoxy? Because I, before I would, like, start throwing arrows and shooting arrows, I got to know what he means. And uh, and I want to know why. So, by, by from because for me, definition of orthodoxy is what is right and true and widely accepted by the, by you know, the Christian, by Christian faith, right? Uh, and so, that to me is orthodox, right? If you depart from that, you're, you're unorthodox, right? And, and this is not, it's not correct. And so uh, I, I would say that in, in preaching or in practice, those are like really the two things. Christians in, in their preaching from the Bible, from the doctrine, you see examples of Jesus loving the, the clear outside, you know, distant, you know, disadvantaged people of society. Like you got tax collectors, you got prostitutes, you got sinners, you got all these lepers, right? No one wanted to hang out with these people. And yet he s sends and extends grace and love and charity and healing and compassion and friendship 
to the people who no one wants to be around, right? Everyone hates these people, especially tax collectors. We hate tax collectors today, but in that day, those guys were like national traitors, right? And so he is extending uh, civility and love and compassion and brings them into his fold. And so how, how is that dangerous and deadly? Okay. Or is it by practice, right, uh, that we are commanded to love your neighbor, right, by Jesus Christ, our Savior, right, our Lord and Savior, uh, commanded to love our neighbor, commanded to forgive. These are very loving commands from orthodoxy, right? People get upset when we talk about the, you know, that he's exclusive, like Jesus is the only way, or people get upset when we talk about, hey, you know, there are certain parameters where you you might not want to understand that. So uh, I don't understand what he's talking about. Orthodoxy is dangerous, uh, and it's probably because of the hypocrisy. But even in hypocrisy, that still uh, distinguishes that we do have a moral standard that we are trying to get to. We, are, we have a moral standard that we hold ourselves to, even though if we practice against it, like, I don't know, wars waged in the name of Jesus Christ, right? No, he doesn't want that. You don't want people killed like like that under those, you know, self-motivating factors by the, some people like that. You know, but like the, the core basic tenets of the faith and the and the basic reading of the Gospels and the Bible, like it's very it's a very loving document, albeit exclusive, right? Albeit that there, there needs to be a level measure of humility and the Holy Spirit working in you. But to say that it's the enemy of civility is really off base. I mean, like it's, matter of fact, all of civility is based off of the orthodoxy of Christian faith, right? Especially the country that you're running for, uh, president for running for, and the constitution you're sworn to defend is based off of that orthodoxy. So I don't know what you're talking about there, RFK. I think you're a little off base there. The second is, I didn't really like his answer either. He said, I'll, I, I read a lot and I, I take what I find useful. And it, this is a very, I think, arrogant position, and it's because you you set yourself above what is time tested orthodoxy Bible. Over, the, I mean, it, for him, it'd be the Catholic Church. Um, and remember, I have to remember that he, his perspective is on the Catholic Church uh, specifically because he goes into it. But it's like he, he's setting himself above two thousand years of people thinking and acting. And devoting their lives to it. And he's like, oh, that's useful. That's not useful. That's useful. That's not useful. And he's created this like buffet, this religious buffet. And he's out here, you know, he's got his bib on. And he's like, do, do, do. Let me take the shrimp. Let me take, you know, the fried asparagus. Let me take, let me take, let me take the coconut shrimp. But you should have a well-balanced meal here. And you should, you should really take it all. It's the, you know, scriptures is not a buffet to be taken, you know, pick and choose at here. Um, and I think what, what that is, is like a, an acknowledgement that you are not going to be judged by, by anything else outside. Like the Bible, you're not going to be judged by the Bible. You're, you're not going to ha- let someone have that authority over your life. And I think that's a problem. Uh, I think that's a, that shows a lack of humility. Like, for instance, if he doesn't find the doctrine of sin useful... You got a problem there, because I don't. I know so many times when I was told information, I said, "Ah, that's not useful. I'm just going to do it anyway." And it, oh, I shouldn't have bought that crypto. Now I'm freaking broke. <laughs> so, like, I think that's um, I think that's a takes takes some pause here. Like the doctrine of sin. If you don't find that useful, you you probably don't understand human motivation. Like people are sinners, and we're all sinful. And um, obviously that's not what the Catholic faith would say. But uh, that's what, for me a Protestant. Uh, faith anyway Uh, so yeah that to me is a little um, I just don't like it I don't like it at all so anyway let's just keep on going here uh, and we're going to skip this I mean shout out to Birch Gold but we're going to keep watching the video it will be nice to have some gold to depend on again text Jordan to 989898 pursuing that's now how how does your how does the spirituality that you've been pursuing that's it's helped you stay on the straight and narrow, let's say, on the behavioral path. How does that inform your political enterprise? Uh, well, I mean, my I, spiritual discipline I, keeps me centered, which is, I think, um, where I, what I need to be, I, you know, where I don't, I feel like, um, you know, uh, God's in charge, he has a plan, and if he's not, and if the world appears to be the way it is and just that, then we're all screwed anyway. Oh, if, 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 um, so I have to live as if, you know, God has a plan. And my, my challenge is to um, put my, you know, my, my most deeply held values first and my relationship with my, you know, higher power and belief system has to be the most important thing in my life. 
and that, you know, everything I do has to come ultimately out of a spiritual place. And that, you know, and when I'm spiritually centered, I, you know, I'm, I'm much more powerful, powerful, much more able to affect the, the earth, uh, you know, the, the world around me, the material part of the world. Uh, Abraham, Abraham Lincoln said something to the effect that if he had a, if he had, um, six hours to cut down a, a mighty oak tree that he'd spend five of the hours sharpening the, the ax. And I think that um, is true, that if you're spiritually centered, you, um, you know, you can wield a power that, um, that things become kind of effortless, you know, that monumental ta tasks occasionally become effortless, you know, uh, so. And, yeah, I found that answer pretty good actually you know like I, I yeah great he said uh god's in charge and he's got a plan and if he doesn't we're all screwed anyway like I, I i get that there's you could sense that level of uh humility and um and you know i think when he's talking about it, it centers him and it sharpens his ask there are aspects of believing in god or higher power that allow you to say st stay centered in the midst of chaos, right? You give up control, right? Because you're like, ah, you know, you, you remain unaffected because if you're like this wave of emotion that's always tossing you to and fro, how can you get anything done? No, how could anyone trust you really? Because you become so erratic in this and reactive to your environment or stimulus. I, I think you become more charitable when you understand that God has given you all things and blessed you with all things and you have nothing and everything you have has been given. You, you start to become more charitable. You start, yeah, if, if you believe in God that made everything everybody you believe that there is intrinsic self-value and worth in every human being that you won't look down on someone or disregard them or you know think of them as lesser or lower than you and there's something that happens into you and eternally if you believe that there's a god out there who is um holding you to a set of morals and who is willing to is gonna, gonna punch you and so there's that fear like you know like every kid is scared for their dad to come home with the stick because they're gonna puck puck you and you it's just one of those things. So I, I think, yeah, believing in a higher power and, and, and God is very helpful in, if you believe to those things as well. Anyway, he's going to talk about marriage here, and let's wrap it up. How long have you been married? Uh, you mean in total, cumulatively, or just to Cheryl? Uh, I, to Cheryl. <laughs> I've been married uh, to, for nine years. And and have you managed to establish a coalition with her on the spiritual and the political front? Yeah, yeah. She already, without being a um, uh, an addict or having any kind of you know sort of particular spiritual training, she had a uh, kind of a sp uh, spiritual maturity and uh, wisdom that um, that you know is complete and whole and completely integrated into everything that she does. She, she's the most honest human being I've ever met. I've never heard her say even a single word, word that was kind of like self-promoting or pretentious or dishonest. She doesn't exaggerate when she tells a story, you know, she's accurate and she still makes it uh, funny. But, the, you know, the word wisdom means a knowledge of God's will, a knowledge of right and wrong. And she has this instantaneous instinct. And that's why one of the things that made her really good at improv which is how she, you know, her show, Curb Your Enthusiasm, is an improv show. There's no script. And the reason she's good is that she just always know, knows the right thing to say, and she also knows. And that's just kind of a little uh, emblem of, of her, you know, of, of being a right. fully... Well, that's a real skill. That's a real skill. Yeah, that's it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> All right. So there's three things here. Uh, the first thing is I love the way he talks about his wife. It's very uplifting and encouraging and, um, you know, like promoting of her. A lot of times guys don't talk about their wives in the best way. It's always complaining. And, and women, too. Women don't talk about their husbands in the in the best way. And it's it's you know, we should, we got to change that in culture. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that your your spouse, your wife or your husband, I believe is the most important decision in your life, apart from following Jesus Christ. But it is the most important decision in your life because it will affect everything. You could have a great day at work. You make tons of money, but you come home to a terrible, awful wife and is nagging you and bringing you down. Uh, your life sucks. <laughs> your life sucks. Or if your husband, you know, you're at home with the kids and they love you and you love them and all that stuff. But you're, you, you come home and your husband is just this berating, 
ugly little troll. And I don't mean that physically. I mean like just uh, emotionally for you. Uh, it's, it's so it's, it's your life sucks, right? So really take care into that. And number three, nowadays, I think it's important that we make a distinguish between wisdom and knowledge. And I like how we brought that up is that there's a lot of knowledge out there. A lot of people know a lot of things and are very well informed because of the internet and everyone's like this, some internet PhD. However, I think there is a very big lacking and gap in wisdom which is why it's uh, my endeavor to always try to, you know, find that wisdom. I think wisdom is the application of knowledge in correct situations, right? And it's one of those things where I wish that for myself that I want to pray that I will always have more wisdom. And I pray the same thing for you. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. If you guys like this type of content, really appreciate it. Hit the like, subscribe, notification bell. Let me know your thoughts down there, uh, down in the comment section below. What do you think about RFK and his views on uh, religion or at least orthodoxy? That thing really surprised me, but I'd want to know what do you guys think down in the comments? I do my best to re uh, uh, comment to every single one. It's a lot. There's a lot of you guys. But I am so super grateful that you guys would be willing to watch my channel. I'm going to see you guys in the next video. See ya.